Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to learn how to paint a loose watercolour maple tree. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so one of the most popular things to paint this time of year are the amazing autumn leaves and trees. So I thought we'd begin today with a sort of loose watercolour maple tree, quite a large painting. Um, I do have a lot of tree painting tutorials in my YouTube channels and on Patreon. We really go into some detail. But for today, we're going to do a maple tree. So size 8 brush, cadmium yellow, and I'm going to begin by creating a tree shape just from scribbling my brush over the page. Cadmium yellow is probably the lightest colour that we're going to see in this tree so I'm beginning with that because of course the colours are all changing this time of year it's absolutely amazing so you can see I've sort of created a shape that's a very very sort of squashy triangle I suppose um, but we are going to then move on to a slightly smaller brush I've got a size 6 brush now pointed round and I'm going to pick up some cadmium orange so this is still fairly wet on the page um, it's going to be slowly drying as we go and that's sort of the whole point is that the colors as we place them on are going to bleed and blend but the more we go along the more we want the colors to stay put just that little bit more so I'm using a slightly smaller brush so I can be just a little bit more precise and now what I want to do is to begin to paint in just some slightly sort of smaller scribbled brush strokes and also to just create a bit more colour on the piece here. Now of course maple leaves are a very beautiful shape, they're pointed leaves um, and this is a loose painting but as you can already see I'm creating texture with this slightly smaller brush you can see that we're starting to get just little sort of scribbles that actually might sort of give us the idea of a, of a shape of a leaf here and there and now I'm gonna go down to I think I'm gonna go down to a size 2 brush now because I really want to start to begin to paint in things just a little bit more clearly and I'm going to use some cadmium red to begin with and I'm going to start to paint in brush strokes that have a little bit of a, a point, a little bit of a sort of slightly spiky edge and you can see that that yellow has really started to dry and so even layering on top of the yellow we get a bit of definition from the red. The beauty of um, autumn trees is that throughout the season they will keep changing as the leaves slowly dry and turn and so you could go back each week and see, or each day even, and see a change. And how wonderful would it be to paint like a series of the same tree, just continually changing and turning as the seasons change. Now you'll notice I've still kept little bits of unpainted space. And that is because at the end we will be adding in a branch or two and that's often the sort of moment where you really see it come together so I'm going to just continue down with this little red color this is cadmium red and I'm just sort of swishing my brush outwards from the main block of colour and that's giving us a nice fine points 
that replicate those maple leaves. I'm now picking up a little bit of Alizarin Crimson um, because it's just a fantastic colour to deepen some of the red tones because of course when you're painting with wet watercolour it's going to dry quite a lot lighter and also what's helpful here is it can create an extra bit of darkness for some of these sort of boughs so I can sort of create a, a slight sense of sections of the tree so I'm sort of painting it in on the underside and then as with most autumn trees in the in a state of transition we might just see a little bit of green hanging on in there and so if I clean my brush off really well this even though this is a lighter color I feel like I want to place it in just at the end so I've got green gold here and I want to just have just a little bit of the green holding on not too much. Now for the trunk of the tree we're going to paint it in with a combination of burnt sienna and Payne's grey which is my usual go-to shadow mix however the the branches that are going to be sort of protruding out in the uh, the gaps are going to seem much more in shadow and the trunk will seem a little bit less in shadow because it's got a bit more light creeping into it but what I want to do first is I just want to take a bit of Alizar and Crimson and just get a little bit of that shadow in there because I want one last deep dark tone just to place in maybe just add in one or two last little leaves it always feels like there's a little bit more you can do okay so I'm gonna let this dry now and then we can finish off by putting in the branches and the trunk. I've only left it a few minutes to dry. I've not let it dry completely because I'm still I'm still very happy if there does turn out to be a little bit of bleed. So um, you might want to draw in a bit of pencil first. So the stem, the stem, the, the trunk. Um, I'm actually I, I quite like the idea of having a sort of a main trunk and then maybe a little one coming off the side yeah like that a little bit so I like my size 2 brush so I'll keep with that so what's lovely is you can create these lovely sort of dry brush techniques just from really angling the side of your brush down in and then I get a little bit of darkness around the top and then just again yeah using the side of the brush so that little bit of unpainted space has really given that a huge amount of texture and interest and now I'm gonna sort of mentally travel up the tree with these branches and you can see what's quite fun is it's going to bleed into it but those little bits of um, unpainted space are just really helping the branches just 
remain kind of visible. So I'm going to say a little bit there, travel up. And I think this is what really helps make a tree, uh, especially a loose watercolour tree painting, really work. As opposed to just focusing on all the leaves. Because if you actually look at a tree, I mean, here's a crazy idea, actually looking at the subject matter you're painting, the real thing, is, is quite useful. Um, <laughs> I do find a lot of us just rely on what we think something looks like. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to be said for painting from imagination. It can be great fun to do that. But if you are painting something that is a real thing, then why not just, even if you're not near the real thing, uh, a quick sort of look in a magazine, a book on the internet, and you will soon find the real thing. So those little bits of unpainted space have just really helped create a fantastic little uh, a fantastic little gap to create the branches. And then one last time, I've got my shady colour. I'm just going to go in and just create these slightly shady spots. watercolour maple tree, perfect for autumn painting. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support, because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, just hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.